We are going to be talking all about in this series, just Nutrition 101. And one of the top questions that I've gotten in the question bar on Instagram stories is some of the top bad food ingredients, I should say, um, along with, you know, guidance in, you know, what you should be looking for. You should become a label reader. That is the most important thing, especially if you're shopping with anything that comes in a box or a bag, make sure that you are looking at it and you are figuring out, okay, is this actually healthy for me? Is it gonna serve my body in a good way? Or is this marketing on the front of the package all hype? Because that's the issue. As we kind of go through stores, um, you'll see that on the front of the package, it's like amazing. It has all the things. It has gluten-free, vegan, I mean, no sugar, zero calories, which I hate calories. You guys know I won't talk about that much, um, but just all, all the things. And from a consumer standpoint, you look at it and be like, this looks awesome. But unfortunately, marketing is so good at what they do and that you have to make sure that you're actually turning the package around, taking a look at it and saying, let me read. And so some of the top common ones that I like to avoid, let's get started. <laughs> So my first one is the oils, the type of oils that are used in foods. And why this is important is because fatty acids, which are made from fats, and that's what they break down to, play a huge role in our health, um, especially our cell membrane. So our cell membrane is made up of fats, phospholipids to be exact. And when we consume not so great oils, get to that in a second, um, this can make our cells a little bit more unstable. Um, it causes inflammation. It can cause heart, well, it increases risk for our heart issues, heart disease, you name it. It is just chaos in the body. And so any really industrialized oils is what I like to avoid in packaged foods. And what those are, are canola oil, um, soybean oil, um, corn oil, safflower oil, sunflower oil, but I'm gonna put a little star next to sunflower oil because there is high aloic sunflower oil and that actually has more omega-9. And um, it's it's actually not bad. So you'll see it a lot in like Tessie Mays of salad dressing, so I will do that too. Um, but the thing is, a lot of these high industrialized oils are really processed, one, and two, they have a higher ratio of omega-6 to omega-3. Now don't get me wrong, we need omega-3, we need omega-6, we need omega-9, we need the omegas and all, but it's all about the balance. And so these are very unbalanced. Um, and so I like to avoid those and really stick with things that are like avocado oil, olive oil, coconut oil, and just real fats, um, like grass-fed butter, if you're okay with dairy, things like that. So oils are a big thing. Um, anything that says partially hydrogenated means that it actually is like a trans fat, and trans fats are notorious for being known to increase heart, heart disease, um, inflammation, the whole shebang. Um, so anything that you see partially hydrogenated, it's a trans um, fat, and even though because they have trans fat on the fat nutrition fact label, which by the way, I mean, honestly, that nutrition fact label is kind of old school. I actually don't even look at it as that, that much as if I look at the ingredients. I look at the ingredients more. And so one thing that it may do is it may have partially hydrogenated, blah, 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 and it says zero trans fat on the package. No, it is because yes, it is doesn't exceed a limit for them to have to say that on the nutrition facts that it has trans fats. Just because it doesn't have a lot in it doesn't mean that you should be consuming it. Um, a lot of the times too, anything with trans fats is pretty processed. So you might as well just not even eat it. Um, other things that I avoid um, and I recommend my clients to avoid is artificial sweeteners. And this comes in a lot of different names that I actually don't know off the top of my head. Um, but sucralose is the top number one. Aspartame, of course, those are the top two that I see a lot. Um, stevia is not an artificial sweetener. Uh, monk fruit extract is not an artificial sweetener. Those aren't what I'm talking about. Um, sucralose and aspartame are probably the most common ones that I see. And while people think, yay, less sugar, which yay, that's a good thing. 
But two, studies are showing how artificial sweeteners affect our gut, our GI, and our microbiome. So no thanks. A lot of the times too, it, if you're struggling with food cravings, can actually cause food cravings. Um, just not my jam. If something has to be processed, made in a lab, I like to avoid it for the most part. Um, other things that I like to avoid, of course, is your basic preservatives, artificial um, flavors, artificial colors. Um, again, it's just really processed. It's coming from a lab and that usually hints that this isn't actually food and most likely this food is not going to serve your body in the way that you want it to. So, um, you know, a lot of people, when, when I talk to them, and it's not technically clients, it's just people that, you know, they want to argue and they want to say like, oh, it's just a little bit, oh, it's here and there. But the issue is, is that no matter what, we're exposed, we're overexposed and we're overburdened with a lot of toxins that we can't control. Um, we can't control when we walk outside and we breathe in polluted air. We can't control things that are um, stressors that may come our way, situations, I mean, you name it. There are things that we can't control and that's okay. We can't control everything. But what we can control is what we put in our mouth. And to avoid things artificial, yeah, that's up there, that's high on my list. No, I'm not gonna be the stickler. And no, I don't recommend you being the stickler if you're at a birthday party or wedding saying, I won't eat that cupcake because that's red food coloring. Okay, that's a special event. But what you're bringing into your home, what you're feeding your kids every day, that's what you need to focus on. And hint, just stick to real wholesome foods. You can't go wrong with that. In addition to artificial colorings and flavors and all that, I mentioned preservatives. And there's a ton out there. And so if by chance you ever like pick up something and you just don't even know what it is, you can always Google the ingredient while you're in the store. And um, some of the most famous ones you might see is sodium benzenoate. Ooh, probably nailed that pronunciation. Um, BHA, BHT, nitrates, nitrites. Um, usually preservatives are some of the last ingredients on the ingredient label because they're just, there's not a lot in it that's used, but at the same time, it adds up. It totally adds up. So make sure that you Google it if you have no idea what it is. And just a little note, if you see an ingredient list and it's longer than a paragraph, you probably would want to put it down. <laughs> Most likely it's a very processed, um, and you just, need to put it away. Another ingredient that I'm not a fan of is caramel coloring. Anytime you got to add, again, extra coloring, it's usually just more processed than it needs to be. But caramel coloring, um, it's actually processed with ammonia. Um, it's to give the caramel color. But the bad thing is, is that animal studies show that it can be carcinogenic, possibly carcinogenic. And then most importantly, foods that you're sensitive or allergic to, obviously avoid. Um, something that I like to steer clear of for honestly, not just my family, but for my clients is a lot of wheat because wheat is all so processed. Um, and I'm actually going to go into this in another nutrition series here on IGTV, but, um, just to talk more about the proteins in wheat, and it's not just about gluten and being gluten-free. Um, but most of the time when wheat is added into products, they're pretty processed. So anytime I see wheat, I usually steer clear of um, because of wheat's effect to the GI. And so no, that doesn't mean just for celiac. That doesn't mean just for people that are sensitive to gluten. That means for every single person. So stay tuned for more of that on um, wheat and gluten and if you should avoid it and why. So I may have thrown a lot at you, maybe, maybe not, maybe it's stuff you know, but I just want to let you guys know that when we work with clients, this is something that we love to take seriously. We love to walk you through the store. We like to focus on the foods and um, items that you can buy because that's what's important. So let's not focus on what we can't buy. Hint, I swear we walk through the store and 80% of the store is junk and we bypass it and people start to realize, wow, there's a lot of food-like items here at the grocery store. So we love to walk you through this. If you're in Austin, that's where we're at right now. Um, and if you're looking for someone to hold your hand throughout it all, we're your gals. And so make sure that you reach out to us 
at thrivalnutrition.com or DM us on here on Facebook and Instagram at Thrival Nutrition. If you're looking for a nutritionist and dietitian in your area, Austin. And then um, we do see clients all over the US, but we can't physically walk you through a store, but we can at least kind of guide you and prep you and help you to figure out what to look for. And even though we may not be physically with you walking through it, a lot of our clients have the availability to text us through the app that we use and ask questions and show us a product saying, hey, I found this mayo, is this okay? And we give them feedback of, it's great, yes, good job. Uh, no, it's not great because of blah, look for this. And so if you're looking for that type of accountability and support, we are your girls because we're here to cut through the BS. We just wanna show you, provide that support, provide that accountability, so you can be confident by the time you are done working with us that you know exactly what to do. So go to our website at thrivalnutrition.com or send us a message so you can get started on your new journey to health.